Here's something different. I picked this up off a farm's burn pile when I uh, was invited out to pick up some TVs to blow up on blue smoke. And it was, it was gonna be just thrown away. But this stuff is really hot right now. And I thought it'd be a good project to look at how we go through and rebuild something like this. Getting that back, back together and, and whatnot. So the first step, unfortunately, is to get it through that window up there. First step is to piece the carcass back together enough that it can be stood up on its own. That's just a matter of getting the joints back together and then pinning them with small nails. This can take four or five hands. I think the best thing to do for this is to pull out and replace all the shelves. It, uh, somebody has cut in this rear door. And I don't know what that's all about. It's got a lot of hand planing marks on it. That could have been an old attempt to make it look antique or it could just simply be old. But people are not going to want to put anything in this if the shelves are uh, this deteriorated. So brand new shelves will not be a problem inside simply because you know you're going to be covering them with the doors so they can be new. Okay, so you can see at some point something nailed it and drove everything down at an angle. So got to bring this, which is the top panel, and none of the stuff is pinned or glued or anything. It's probably all hide glued at one point, and it's just come apart. But that thing is is got to be pulled back up square, and then we'll probably pin it rather than gluing it. And then all the rest of these panels, all the way down, have got to come up. And this is before you can even get to doing any of the stuff, any of the rebuilding. And I would just assume on any old piece like this, it's lead paint. So, you know, act accordingly and be aware of that. It very easily could take some serious pressure, especially in a water damage piece like this, to push things back into alignment. But before you put that kind of weight on it, you need to make sure all your little tenons are, are started. And this thing is, is full of tenons. So here, for instance, the other side I haven't done yet, you know, you've got these, which are shelf board hangers. And you need to make sure they're all in place all the way along. Otherwise, um, you're just gonna crush it. And now, now that they're in place, I will pin this board here in an attempt to hold it. So, man, it's like a merry-go-round. Every time I pin something, I find something else that's broken. But it'll be worth it in the end. This will be, uh, well, if I replace those doors with punch tin, it'll be a $400 thing. If I leave the doors as itch, two, two fifty. So we'll have to see how much effort I want to put into it. There's that side piece together. Now, like a lot of these I've found, the doors are actually attached to a face frame. So here's the main, you know, cabinet wall. And then face frame is uh, this piece right here. And so what I have done is removed the straight blade screws. And I have basically fudged this edge out a little farther and then repinned it with drywall screws at an angle. And that gives these doors enough room that they can open and close again, despite the fact that they're all warped. So I don't have to grind or sand them down because again, lead paint, probably lead paint. So this side is now back together. Obviously still have the back to do, but uh, now we can work on the other side. So here I've got to line up two of these rungs. And what I'll do is I'll apply with the clamp some gentle pressure to start bringing it over. And then once I've got it brought over, then, uh, then I can pin them in place. Unfortunately, in this case, I have lost, or I never got, this top board. So we are going to have to remanufacture that. And it's probably best if we remanufacture that before we go on any farther. Now, I'd love it if it didn't show 
that it had been remanufactured. And I was looking around if I had anything <clears throat> that was this white, and I don't. But I could, for instance, steal this backboard here and cut my piece out of that. That would at least get that would at least get it to be kind of old rather than having completely fresh and new. I just don't have anything with with this cracked paint around the shop right now. Because we cleaned up. Should never clean up. So here's the piece I made. Color doesn't match as well as I would like, although it'll lighten up dramatically once it's washed. Of course, so will the rest of it. But this was made out of a shelf from the inside. Very simple tongue and groove construction. And since I was going to replace the shelves anyways, it's a perfect source. Usually, however, they're the same color. Well, a lot of the times they're the same color, and this is a great source. Because no one notices if you have brand new shelves in it, even if you have to paint them and, and fake crackle them. But usually it's a great source to match the outside. Not this time. And there's that side reassembled. Reassembled and pinned, and already she feels like a, a much different unit still do to put some more pressure right there though. This whole back is warping out. Well, there's only so much you can do. We're just trying to get her together well enough to sell it. And then it'll sit in somebody's kitchen and they'll never know how bad it was when it first started. <laughs> oh, they're all like this. Now I think it's time to work on reassembling the back. And the back is is here. Right helper? Yep, the back is in that mess. That's a shelf. You can see you can see why I'm getting rid of them. So this is the back here. That ought to be fun to thread down through. And like I said, somebody has cut this back drawer out. So, I didn't mark them when I put them, pulled them apart. I should have. You should do that, but uh, I think I can figure out how it came. This stuff is so thin, and it's still damp, so it should straighten out and then dry flat. Look at that one. That can't be beneficial to getting this back together square. Looks like I'm gonna have to make another one. So there's the back put together this far. Panel. This is another one of these. And this one will go right here and then one more panel on the top. And uh, you know, in this case the split is working to my advantage. But once we get it all together I'll uh, I'll nail it in place. There's my piece in place. It's just a board with two grooves and tenon on the end. So when they did this back cluge thing, um, they weren't really trying very hard. And so I've got a problem in that this thing won't come down all the way. So what I'm gonna do is pull this board out and then I'll cut that groove another half inch higher up inside and then reassemble it. No one will ever see that I did that. It will compensate for this mess down here. See, the cabinet is not worth fixing this mess. Not, not if you're just going to turn around and sell it like I am. So I'm just going to leave that. That's just part of the ambiance, as it were. I'll probably fix those bottom doors so that they're functional again. But beyond that, I'm just going to leave her go. So... Uh, since it seems to be even across the top, that would imply that, you know, it's, it's half an inch on both sides. Something in this area is half an inch wrong, which would be very, very, very possible. So I'm just going to cut that groove half inch deeper, drop her down farther, 
And again, no one will ever see it. It'll be perfect. There's the back pinned. And I did break down and put two screws in the top corners. I uh, Normally I would try not to, just to... Even before you could get to the insides to work on them, I had to fix the doors. So what I did is I took this door and I, I put it at the table saw and I took just the tiniest whisper off this edge. And uh, then I cut with a chisel the hinge plates in just a little bit deeper. And now the two of them overlap properly, whereas before it closed on this edge, now it closes properly on the rabbit inside. So that's now fixed. It does rub really hard up here, and I'm going to go ahead and take a whisper off the top up here. might try to pull the door frame together first and see if I can move it. Otherwise, I'll just take and probably with a, a hand plane. I hate to do it with the paint, but I don't really have a choice. Take a hand plane and just bring a little bit off the top. Remember, lead paint. Well, it took a little while. I had to rework all four doors, but now they all close, and that's that's really kind of important to to the resale value. You you can have a beat up cabinet, but you know what? The doors the doors have to work. And that one board I replaced inside it doesn't look too bad. It'll be fine. Smell the mold or whatnot coming off that one. It has to come out and be discarded. That's going to be a little more difficult down there because they held it in with with frickin' framing spikes and they don't want to drive out without destroying everything so those nails might have to be cut off but I think I can pop these with a cat's paw and get that out. That's the next step. While my shelf boards are drying I'm going to go ahead and try and clean up the face uh, and the insides of the cabinet. Now the last thing this cabinet needs is more water, but you have to clean it with something. So I'm using a mix of baking soda and water, and I'm going to mist it on and scrub it with a stiff brush, and then wipe it off, trying to keep as little water on the wood as possible, because like I said, it, it just doesn't need any more. And already you can see a tremendous difference. Um, you want to resist the temptation, especially if you're going to resell, to refinish the project. Number one, it'll never ever be worth your time. But two, when, when someone comes into a store or a consignment shop or comes and visits your, your home for something you got for sale, and it's uh, you know, a shabby sheet cabinet like this, they have their own vision in their mind. And whatever you do probably won't match that. So you don't want to do it for them. You want to give them the possibility, the idea that they could turn this thing into whatever it is they want. What you're doing as the craftsman, so to speak, is taking something that was in such bad shape it could not be sold and repairing it enough that it is back up and will serve the function again. So that's what you're after. But you don't want to do the project for them. This is actually oak. All of the, the, the main verticals and horizontals are oak and ash. It's, it's what they built. It would look very pretty, stripped down and refinished. If I do that, I will weed out everybody who was looking for the shabby chic. I will weed out everybody who was looking for a project. I will weed out everybody who didn't like the fact that it has exposed oak. Everybody who likes painted surfaces this way. You walk into the store, you see, and you think, whoa, I could strip the paint and this would be awesome. You buy it. Or you think, I love the patina. This would be awesome. And you buy it. Or you think, hey, this would look great painted. And you buy it. That's what you're going for here. Uh, and it can be very difficult. I find myself tend to clean them up or, or repair them too much many times. you got to hold back and you leave the possibilities for someone else to explore.
I've decided before I go on, I really have to come up with a top. This thing is just so floppy with all the shells removed. So I'm going to measure up and build the top. It'll simply be a, a rounded over affair, probably, probably covered in, you know, some polyurethane. It'll just be a bare wood top and somebody else can, can do what they want with it later. And then once the top is done, and we'll square the case when we do the top, then we'll come down here and fix the legs. It clearly sat in dirt or water, so the bottoms of the legs are all rotten off. Then I'll just pick a measurement, and I'll cut them all off at the same height. It should probably take two inches. Front ones here are the worst ones. Actually, that one right there is the worst one. So I'll, I'll just pick an imaginary point right here, whack it off very carefully with a handsaw, measure, and then duplicate that on the rest of them. Because who knows what is or isn't square on this? I'm measuring the length of the legs, not from this board here, which is rides in a groove and could be up and down. I'm actually measuring from the top and cutting them all that way. When you do this, you just have to pick a spot. You pick a spot and work from that point because otherwise you just go around in circles. When setting the first shelf, um, you kind of square the case best you can because, I mean, nothing here is square. You just check that all the doors close and things like that. And every one I've ever seen uh, of this style has, has basically needed these cutouts, these tabs, that then slip over the top of the various shelves. So I just work them in slowly. This has got a bunch of this chain crap in the way, which I'll probably remove. I think I'll remove it. So I have to sort of work it down in. Putting the shelves back in makes a tremendous difference to the way it looks. It's really starting to come along now. Now we're starting to get a cabinet that is useful again. I was able to recycle some of the original shelves, not in their original positions, but Basically, I had two good ones and parts of two more that were salvageable. So I pieced together the bottom one, and then you got that one back in its original spot. The two that I made, and then that one up there, and you can see that nice little hump in it. But whatever, it's fine. So here's the top. It's glued up out of three boards of birch, again from our family farm. And I don't know why I picked pretty birch, because you can't see any of it. So that was a bit of a waste, but this is what spalting is. It creates these beautiful colors in here that no one will ever see. Simple rounded corners. I will just drill and put it down with drywall screws, recessed. I'll hammer in pegs, cut them flush, and then we're done. I don't even think I'm going to finish it in any way. Uh, I'll leave that to the next person. They can do whatever they want. Because if I put some finish on top of this and the person who buys it wants to paint the insides, which if I was going to store good things inside, I'd paint the inside. Uh, they won't stick to the finish I choose, so I'll just leave her bare wood, and they had better get her done in a hurry, because it'll start to crack after a few years. There's the top mounted, and if you remember how wobbly or whatnot it was at the beginning, she's nice and firm now. The drawers! I forgot to do the drawers. So here's one I've already done. Very simple design. They had plywood. I found a chunk that was large enough and just been slipped inside there. Now hopefully your drawers are only pinned. They might be pinned along this edge. They might be pinned along the bottom edge. This is more common to see them pinned down here. Usually just two in the back. If they're glued, you're probably screwed. You might be able to pop this loose right here. Maybe if you took your saw and very carefully cut off just behind all of the dovetails, maybe then you could get it apart and, and replace the side. But most of the times if they're glued, you're going to shred the entire thing attempting to get it apart. Luckily, mine aren't glued or they're glued with hide glue, so they've already fallen apart on their own.
Now to do the other one. Now this drawer, this drawer was divided and has this lovely mouse chewed reading, writing, and arithmetics. Uh, arithmetic is spelled wrong. Okay, it has got crap. They got a whole bunch of nails in this. So I have got a few nails across here to pop and a few nails in the field going into the divider. With luck, the divider will stay in place. See, it's not attached at the far end. With luck, I can get the divider to stay in place. Otherwise, I will simply discard the divider as unnecessary. Here's that drawer pulled apart. And that's since I didn't have... What I had was big chunks of plywood and little chunks of plywood. So I've actually used two. One here and one here that I cut down. And I will just move the divider over. And no one will ever know. Now it's all done. So yeah. I discovered those false fronts and the doors there. Used to have something else. It was probably punched tin. Had something else on the top. The bottom has always been those those wood sheets. My guess is punched tin, though it could also have been a window screen. So I think it might have been a like a semi pie safe kind of thing. If I were to pull them off and punch up a whole antique -y design on tin, which I don't have any old tin right now, you're probably looking at, I mean it came together better than I thought, you're probably looking at a $500 cabinet with, with the punch tin, maybe six. I imagine it would go more, probably where you live, but Montana. It's a pretty economically depressed place. I'm thinking that I could maybe put 350, 375 on the cabinet itself. So that's not bad for uh, a day. Yeah, a day's work, more or less. I uh, promised the people I got it out of their burn pile that I'd cut them some of the income. But I had to do a lot of work, so I'm thinking $50 for the for the pile that I got. $50 is probably pretty fair, especially for something they were uh, actively going to burn. So it's like found money, and then I I get the rest. So 250 profit maybe. It's not bad. Turned out nice. Of course, I still have to get it out of the hole.